Hello and welcome to yet an another lecture on basic electrical engineering. Paper for PSCE101. Myself, Pratik Dorai, Assistant Professor of Dr. Shubhir Chandra Shur Institute of Technology and Sports Complex, Department of Electrical Engineering. Today, my topic is battery backup device and power factor improvement. There's an objective at the end of this topic. Students will be able to understand the concept of battery backup device and power factor improvement. So, battery backup device, or we can say it is uninterruptible power supply or UPS. <clears throat> so, it is a the conception is that we have to provide a backup to the battery. So, the, it is an electrical equipment that provides emergency power, again emergency power to the, when the, to the consumers basically, when the main powers that fails. So it is that electrical equipment to provide emergency power to the consumer when the main power fails. So a UPS that is differed from a standby generator or auxiliary power supply in that it will provide near instantaneous protection from input power interruption by supply electrical energy stored in batteries. Supercapacitor or other static devices. So this is the general difference between a UPS. So it is the UPS that differ from a standby generator or auxiliary power supply in that that it will provide near instantaneous protection from input power interruption by supplying electrical energy stored in batteries, supercapacitor or other static devices. So, however, the UPS is not able to supply backup power continuously that we have already seen this in our daily life as they are rated for short duration. But UPS is sufficient enough to switch on a standby power source. So, a UPS or we can say that is the battery backup system is typically used to supply emergency power to computers, communication equipments, electrical apparatus and hardware circuits when unexpected power interruption when unexpected power interruption may cause business disruption, loss of data, fatalities, etc. So our UPS, so what is the general purpose of choosing a UPS that will come to our mind? The answer is a UPS or a battery backup system is typically used to supply emergency power to computers, 
communication equipments, electrical apparatus, and hardware circuits were unexpected power interruption may cause business disruption, loss of data, fatalities, etc. So this is the schematic diagram or schematic of UPS internal circuit. So now we are discussing about the operating of UPS, how UPS is operating during the fail of main power. So this is the UPS or the battery backup device. If I concentrate on that particular internal circuit of that UPS, that is the UPS internal circuit, so it is clear that there is an AC main or the normal AC power. That is the main, main of our house or say where the UPS is installed and it is going to the load. So there are two switches, one is switch one and another is the switch two. There is a transformer that we all know and a charger that is connected to the secondary side of the transformer followed by the charger. The charger will directly connect to the battery in order to charge the battery followed by inverter and it is directly connected to the load. So what is happening? What is the operating? The operating will say that the normally the AC power that is the power to the load that is if the normal operating condition is when the switch S1 is there in operating or S1 is closed, the load that is our household load that required or any load that required normal AC power and it is clear that the normal AC power is directly supplied to the load during the normal operating condition when the switch S1 is closed or through the main switch S1. When a switch is given, normal AC power is fed to the load. It is a simple way of application. But the conception of battery backup device or UPS occurs when a main AC power fails. So during the failure of the main AC power means the switch S1 is now open and the switch S2 is closed. So when switch S2 is closed and S1 opens during the failure of the AC main, that means the backup power to the backup power within the battery that is transmit through the inverter and then through the inverter it is going to the load. So the battery that is stored the power it is fed to the inverter and we all know in our in discussion that inverter is converting the DC power to a AC1 that is need for our load. A DC input is converted to AC output power in an inverter. So when the main power is off, the switch S1 became open and S2 is closed. So the, as a result, the power that is stored in the battery is fed to the inverter which convert the DC power to an AC1 is the input power to an AC1 and then it is fed to the load. This is the internal circuit of an UPS. So, when the AC main power is available, what will be happening? It is clear that when the AC main power will be there, that means switch S2 is closed, open, and switch S1 is closed again. When AC main power is given once again, or AC main power is come back once again, so it means the switch S2 is open, switch S2 is open, and switch S1 is closed again. 
and that will help the charger that is connected i have told to the secondary of the transformer that will again charge the battery the charger that is connected to the secondary of the transformer when the ac power is come back again it will the charger that is connected to the secondary of the transformer it will again charge the battery and this operation is again repeated when the power ac main power is failed again so the operation of switch 1 and switch 2 are achieved with the help of a mechanical relays that is associated with the hardware circuit so so we are we are just seeing the schematic diagram of an ups the internal circuit of an ups and how ups of barriers now we are seeing a modified ups that is the schematic diagram of a modified ups so it is clear that that uh, another version of the ups or the battery backup device that is given here so here it is given that the main transformer that is used to convert the main transformer that is used to convert between supply voltage and the battery voltage supply voltage and the battery voltage it is clear because battery voltage is required 12 volt that is clear here battery voltage that we have required 12 volt so to provide to slightly different trans ratio so uh, the 12 volt terminal that is used the 12 volt terminal that is used to convert the charger output voltage to the inverter input voltage so that is 12 volt that is used to charge the particular charger part and the output from the charger is dc that is fed to the battery the inverter output voltage this is the battery and the inverter that converts the DC voltage to AC1 and it is fed to the load. And it is clear that the total 14 volt that is used to charge the charger. So this 14 volt is used to charge that particular charger and the 12 volt that is used to convert the charger output voltage that is the DC voltage to inverter input voltage that is the DC voltage inverter input voltage that is the DC voltage and the inverter output voltage that is the AC1 it is the fed to the load 14 it is fed to the load and the 14 volt terminal is used to charge the battery through the charger so 12 volt terminal is used to convert the charger output voltage to the inverter input voltage and the inverter output voltage that is ac1 is fed to the load but the 14 volt terminal is used to charge the battery to the charger. This is the another schematic diagram. So for online UPS system, the batteries are always connected to the inverter so that no power transfer switches are necessary. When power failure occurs, the charger rectifier simply drops out the circuit and batteries keep 
the power supply to the load or the unchanged battery power supply is remain unchanged when the power is restored the charger rectifier resume carrying the load and begin to charge the batteries the online ups is must costly costlier but has two distinct advantage the first one is it provides a physical isolation between the ac mains and the load say hardware circuits and second one is the sensitivity of this ups is, is much more than ordinary ups and it takes care as a backup power for minor fluctuation in main power or in mains power then that providing a constant source of interrupted power so this is the general conception of battery backup device so another part of our discussion is the power factor and power factor improvement so we have already known the conception of power factor the power factor is the ratio of active power to apparent power that is kilowatt to kilo volt ampere kilowatt to kva so kilowatt means vi cos phi by vi so since the power active power is denoted by vi cos phi so i can be calculated by p by v cos phi so then the circuit current is affected by the power factor it is clear if the circuit voltage is held constant and if the power factor is low if the power factor is low that means current value is high and it will it means that the it gives a higher power loss that is i square r loss and enhance the cost of operation so from the equation it is clear when the power factor is low the value of current is high so corresponding i square r loss or the power loss is high and which enhance the cost of operation so in long transmission application the power factor is improved our main concern that how we can improve the power factor so in long transmission application the power factor is improved by using static shunt capacitors so let us take an rl load we are considering on the particular figure where it is a rl load and a ac input given so the rl load connected connected across ac supply so this is the phasor diagram of rl circuit operated from is the supply this is the phasor diagram of rl circuit this is all known to us where the reference voltage is v and the load current is i1 that is here we seen in this figure load current is i1 so this is the phase angle phi1 so let a capacitor that is placed a capacitor that is placed in shunt with the rl load this is the rl load and let a capacitor is placed in shunt with the rl load the circuit current that is the main current i2 is nothing but the phasor sum of capacitor current ic and the load current i1 it is clear that the circuit current i2 is now the phasor sum of capacitor current ic and the load current i1 so this is the circuit diagram of when c is added in parallel with rl load or added in shunt with rl load so this is the general phasor diagram that we all know that ic it is a vector sum of that is clearly written that is the phasor sum of ic plus i1 that is ic plus i1 that we have get the i2 
it was the previous value of and we mainly take the voltage V as a reference. Says that diagram with C in shunt with RF. So this is the previous one. Value of the power factor. Uh, so it is clear that that the inclusion of capacitor C in parallel to the RF load, the angle phi, the power factor angle reduces. So the angle phi, that is the power factor angle, that is reduces, and hence cos phi will be increased. Uh, as the phi reduces, the cos phi that is increased. So it was the previous power factor and this was the new power factor. So it is clear that the previous power factor is phi 1 and the new power factor is the phi 2. So the previous power factor is phi 1, previous power factor phi 1 and the new power factor is phi 2. So it is clear that the power factor angle phi 2 is reduces and hence the as the power factor angle phi 2 is reduces that means the cos phi that is the power factor that will increase. The power factor is now greater in this case and it causes the current I2 to have a linear value than I1. So we can write OC that particular part. OC is the is equal to I1 cos phi 1. I1 cos phi 1 or I2 cos phi 2. So I2 became I1 into cos phi 1 by cos phi 2. As we all know that cos phi 1 is more compared to cos phi 2. So that means I1, I2 is less than I1. So, it is clear from that particular figure since cos phi 1 is greater than cos phi 2. That means I2 that is less than I1. So we have seen the conception of power factor improvement by adding a capacitor C in parallel with the RL load. So we can let I see that this one it is I1 sin phi 1 minus I2 sin phi 2. I1 sin phi 1 minus I2 sin phi 2 equal to I C. So multiplying that with both by V, so we can see V I C equal to V I1 sin phi 1 minus V I2 sin phi 2. It is QC is equal to Q1 minus Q2. And we can write that is equal to T equal to 10 phi 1 minus 10 phi 2. But Q is the reactive power that is V1 sin phi. And Q is also the, we can write, it is T 10 phi that is known to us. But Q1 is the reactive VA that taken by the load from source when there is no capacitor. Q2 is the reactive VA taken from source when C is installed in parallel to RN load Q2. And QC is the leading reactive VA drawn by, drawn by capacitor from the supply. So we can write QC equal to VIC, that is V squared WC, because IC is equal to V by 1 by W omega C. So we can write V omega C. So C equal to QC by V square omega, or V square W, we can say. So from that equation, we can see that the value of the capacitor that is required for power factor correction. This is the value of the capacitor that is required for power factor correction. So let us take an example to understand that what we have discussed till now. 
it is given that a load that draws a hundred kilowatt of power from eleven kV fifty hertz three phase supply eleven kV fifty hertz three phase supply. The power factor is zero point seven lagu. Using sun capacitors in parallel to the load, the power factor is desired to be improved to zero point nine five lagu. Determine the value of capacitance in of the shunt capacitor. So you all know the solution is Q that is equal to P ten five. So what is the old value of the reactive power Q? That is P is given hundred kilowatt ten of pi is cos inverse zero point seven because the previous power factor was zero point seven lagu that is one zero two kV AR. Theta equal to pi equal to cos inverse zero point seven. So, what is the new desired value of reactive power? That is Q new of desired value that is P equal to ten of cos inverse zero point nine five because the power factor is desired to be improved to zero point nine five lagu. So, it is thirty two point eight seven kV AR. So now the capacity there to be supplied for improvement of the power factor from 0.7 to 0.9 is the difference between the two reactive power. That is, that is Q old minus Q new. That is 69.13 kVA. So in AC application capacitors, the capacitance value XC. Is VPH square by Q of capacitance. So we all know that all the values are given in a data for a numerical problem are the output values number one and number two all are given as a line value, line voltage, line current in this way. So it is the line voltage in order to convert a line voltage to a phase voltage of a three phase supply. We have to divide the line voltage eleven kV by root three, so that is the phase voltage became line voltage by root three, so it is eleven by root three whole square. And the capacitor is a three phase supply, so capacitor for the each phase that is so the Q that is the reactive power required for the each phase that is sixty nine point one three divided by three, so one point seven five kilo ohm per phase. That is the main thing. One point seven five kilo ohm per phase. So the value that is the capacitance, uh, and so the capa, so the uh, capacitive reactance. So we can say, so the capacitance that is one by two pi F X C. That is one by two into pi into F is given fifty hertz frequency, and C value that we have found X C value that we have found one point seven five into ten to the power three ohm. That is equal to 182 microfarad per phase. This is the general conception how we can calculate the value of capacitor. So another problem that we will deal with that this one, an inductive load operating 80 watt is operated from a 240 volt single phase 50 hertz supply at a power factor of 0.44 kV. Find the rating of the single phase capacitor bank to be installed at the load terminals so that the operating power factor is improved to unity. So previous power factor was 0.44 lagu. Now it was one power factor. What is the value of the capacitance for this bank? So we all know Q equal to QC that is equal to P 10 phi 1 minus 10 phi 2. So P is given 100. It P is given 80 watt, so phi one is the previous value cos inverse of 0.44 and phi two is cos inverse of 1.0. Putting those values, that you see is 163.27 bar. So we all know the capacitor, hence a single phase capacitor bank operating 163.27 bar is to be installed so that the power factor that is improved to unity. So we all know QC equal to d square by XC. So XC equal to d square by QC. So it is a single phase. The difference between the previous problem and this problem is that 
in this problem we do not divided the voltage by root 3 that's we, we do not do that to 40 by root 3 because it is a single phase conception the previous was was three phase conception so it is 240 whole square divided by 163.27 so the conception difference in conception is that the previous one where we can concentrate on the three phase previous problem was the three phase so that is why we divided the voltage by root three and here it is the single phase so it is only 240 so 240 xc is equal to 240 square divided by 163.27 that is 352.79 ohm so xc that we all know that is the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 by 2 pi f into c so value of the C is equal to 1 by 2 pi f xc from that equation just putting those values 1 by 2 pi into 50 that is the 50 hertz it is given and the value of the C is 352.79 that is equal to 9 microfarad so the difference is the difference is that the previous problem it was the three phase line so we have to divide it, the voltage by root 3 here it is the single phase so we do not need to divide by the root 3. So this is the value of the capacitor that is required. The value of the capacitor, capacitance. So we can say the value of the capacitance for this bank is given by this. As calculated in this way. Thank you.